Hello everybody and welcome back to Dirt Road Nation. I'm Zach. I'm Jake. And we are the Dirt Road Men. And these glasses are weirdly water stained. A little bigger sip than I was intended. Oh, that is good. Yeah. Uh, today we're drinking uh, Knob Creek 12 and I'm having a Diesel Wicked and Jake's having uh, Raw Dogged Air, which apparently is a rare commodity anymore. Anyway, uh, we're going to be going over some some cigar don'ts. Just like some basic... We, we did some cigar etiquette. These are like some, some things to avoid when smoking a cigar. And uh, part of me feels like this old Dane Cook joke where it's like, Hey, why don't you tell me what you don't want on your burger? Well, shit, there's a lot I don't want on my burger. I don't want you to shit on it. Um, I, I don't like motor oil. Those are obvious. So these are going to be some things that people commonly do, and uh, some people do by accident, particularly, I think, the first one. Uh, Frequently. <laughs> but you want to avoid, and they will greatly enhance your cigar experience. And one of them, I believe the last one, will greatly enhance your cigar experience by not getting the shit kicked out of you. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll go with the first one, okay. which is uh, don't inhale your cigars. Cigars are not meant to be inhaled. Do not do this. If you if you want to do it, um, you're dumb. That's how you get lung cancer. But also, it's just unpleasant, which I believe you can attest to from like last <laughs> week. So, yeah, every cigar I smoke, I inhale at least once. Uh, number two, uh, don't cut too low. Uh, when you're cutting the end off, it will, it's going to be a bad time. Your whole cigar is going to unravel. Or at least start to unravel. And there are some cigars, like the one I'm smoking today, that's a torpedo, that you kind of have a lot more play with. But you might not really know this one's a torpedo because I cut it down about where you would cut a normal one. There is a cap that holds everything together. You're supposed to take part of that cap off, not the whole one. If you're really not sure how to do this, there are some cigar cutters, doesn't really work well with these torpedoes, um, that have backs on them. Super convenient for that. Or you can go with a punch. Um, the only problem with punches, and I've had this happen twice to me in the last week, is uh, if, you, if your punch gets blunt and you push too hard, it is also going to fuck up your cigar, so. <laughs> um, but another big one, and, and you'll see this a lot when somebody goes into a cigar shop with like no knowledge of cigars, and they'll ask somebody that works there, and that person may either be really into cigars, may be pretentious about cigars, but they may try to convince you to overspend early. What I mean is... They may try to sell you a, an $18, $20, $30 cigar on your first go-round. Because, yeah, just start with something great. Um, it's harder to develop your cigar palate than it is your whiskey palate. If you've had any experience with either of those, you know that. Um, you know that it's difficult either way. You are not going to notice a massive difference between a 5 to $10 cigar and a $20 cigar, period. My favorite cigar is right, sits right around 10 bucks. So, <clears throat> Almost all my favorite cigars sit right around 10 bucks. Uh, a lot of the cigars in my humidor I got for three bucks a piece, ish. So, don't get hokey doped in too soon. Yeah, uh, work your way up, and then when you have a more refined like palette and you can start pulling flavors out of cigars and understanding the differences, Particularly after you've gone through like Connecticut's, Naturals, Maduro, shit like that. Then you start playing up a little bit because then you'll be able to actually appreciate the cigar. I don't think until we've been doing this for like a year, I hadn't even had a $30 cigar before. Hmm. Unless the one Momo gave me for my 18th birthday was 30 bucks. I have no idea how much it was. But just don't overspend too early. You won't. You won't appreciate it. Similar to whiskey. Yeah. Um, don't smoke it too fast. 
uh, you will canoe the hell out of it. And what that is is one side will burn a lot faster. It's typical with uh, smoking too fast or poorly made cigars can do that too. But um, smoking too fast can cause that, lighting them wrong, or poorly made cigars can cause it. So I think we jump chain there. But anyway, um, also a really common sign that you're smoking too fast, but you haven't fucked up your cigar experience yet. If the cigar is really well made and you got it evenly lit, you may not canoe if you're smoking too fast. What you will notice early on, though, before it starts doing something like that, is when you go to ash, uh, it should come off in like a straight line. You're going to have more of like a cone. You're seeing a cone of like hot ash when you're ashing these off. Uh, you're smoking too fast. Slow down. You should puff a cigar one to three times a minute over the course of the time you smoke it. Uh, I know early on I really had a problem with uh, smoking all of my cigars too fast. I smoked them like twice as fast as he did. But then I slowed down so much that he was smoking them faster than me. So, But I had to be really conscious for a while to stop that because it causes your cigars to go bad faster as well. So you don't want to do that. Which uh, takes uh, the... We kind of already touched on this. Um, don't partially light your cigar. And what I mean is a ton of people like to get a soft flame lighter in particular when they first start. Uh, or they'll get a torch and just like light part of their cigar and not even pay attention to make sure the whole thing's lit and then just go puffing. Uh, it doesn't matter what you do. If you don't fix that right away, you're gonna have a canoeing problem. I don't care how well that cigar is made, maybe they're leaving out over time, most likely it's gonna be an issue. Um. Don't bring outside cigars to a lounge. Like some cigars, like the uh, Fat Bottom Betty, produces a lot of a lot of smoke. So if you're gonna be, oh no, that's no, not what that's you meant. Not, that's no, not at all so if you're I mean. going to a uh, cigar lounge, don't bring somebody else's cigars. Buy one from there. Yeah. Or if you do bring other cigars in, I don't know where the fuck he was going, but to be I fair, know. I you probably derailed the shit out of him <laughs> by writing down half a number and stopping. But, um, <laughs> it's just impolite. Don't be a cheap guy that, you know, comes to the cigar lounge, eats up their Wi-Fi, one of their seats, uh, smokes up their room, and uses their TV, and doesn't pay them anything. You can bring your own. I've done this before. I'll bring a cigar with me uh, to smoke there, and then I'll buy one to take home. Or I will buy a cigar when I get there and I'll smoke that cigar and then I'll smoke my own cigars. Depending on how long I'm going to be there. If you're not going to do either of those, at least tip them like five to ten bucks. Just to use their lounge. It's kind of a courtesy thing. Even just tipping them five to ten bucks, you're, if people notice, you're probably going to catch looks. I don't... Unless you know the shop owner really well. And I, I don't know if the owners I'm friends with would be cool with this, because I've never done it to them. But they probably would be eventually. Just don't make a habit out of stuff like that. And, and if you can't afford to do something like that, it's kind of like if you can't afford to tip when you're going out to eat. Just don't go. You can order scars online. No problem. You want to tackle number six? Don't smoke cigars if you're a cunt. <laughs> no. If, if you notice, I'm not smoking today because I've been a little cunty lately. <laughs> yes! That was the perfect <laughs> follow-up. Um, so all I wrote was don't smoke cigars if you're, and then just nothing. That's I didn't write right. anything. <laughs> what I was going to say was um, particularly dehydrated or, or, or not up on your nourishment for the day hmm. one thing that is common to a lot of new cigar smokers is if you're not careful you'll end up with cigar sickness you'll get a headache you'll feel kind of nauseous hmm. it, it, 
I, I particularly notice I'll get a headache like right behind the eyes and then kind of kind of almost a neck ache like right at the back of my head and if I really overcommit like say that happens right as I start the cigar and I'm smoking like a Churchill by the end of the thing I'm going to want to just throw up even if I don't inhale you it's a good idea to have some water around I usually try to make sure that I'm relatively hydrated especially lately but have something to drink with you and make sure you're not on like an empty stomach. So this dude's broken all of those rules today. That's why he's looking at you funny. <laughs> but he's like, also not smoking a cigar. So. I mean, when I usually like when I do smoke a cigar, it's usually on an empty stomach. I'm always dehydrated. It's like that's probably why they've been bothering me more lately. Yeah. Yeah. So he's learning shit, too. <laughs> <laughs> then the last one, uh, don't give people shit about what they smoke. This one's particularly good for your teeth. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a good way <laughs> to uh, lose them. <laughs> smoke what you like, let other people smoke what they like. Same with whiskey. I Yeah, I see so many people. Okay, so one of my mentors is Sean Whalen. He's really into cigars, and you'll see cigar guys that follow him like, oh, what's your favorite cigar? His favorite cigar is the Fat Bottom Betty. It's favorite flavored cigar made in uh, one of the Dakotas, owned by Drew State. They got bought out. So many people will give you shit for smoking flavored cigars. Cut that shit out. It's, it's not good, and it's not a good look. And you just... <clears throat> A lot of people get started on cigars and whiskey, for that matter. You'll notice a lot of these bleed over. There's a reason that we do these two things together. Um, with flavored ones. Don't don't give people shit. Some people, like I still, I've been smoking cigars at this point for like five, six years. I still have a box of Fat Bottom Betty's right behind me. So, just... Don't give people shit. Let them enjoy what they enjoy, unless uh, unless they enjoy Henry McKenna. Yeah, fuck them. But that's not a cigar, and this is a cigar video, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Notice how uh, the same week this is going up, there's not going to be a "Don't do this with whiskey" video, and that is because I could not think of. of Things like this to say because I will shit on you for for drinking Henry McKenna. Mostly I'll give you shit, but it happens. <laughs> now, don't I don't know how I'm trying to say this, and I'll just shut up. Jake did number nine. <laughs> Same way I did number six. You, you, uh, you got any train of thought there? I can cut no, this No, yeah, I was just, I don't have anything. Okay. I don't know. I wanted to word it, so. All right, well, I think that'll wrap us up for today. If you guys enjoyed this, let us know. We can do another one, probably. I'll, I'll pull some shit out of my ass. I'm sure I can think of, like I said, there's a ton of stuff. Don't put motor oil on your cigars. That's just an awful idea. Unless you're a mechanic and it's already on your hand, then. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, till we see you again, I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. We're the Dirt Road Men. Hey, everybody, if you like this video, uh, hit a like or dislike, comment, uh, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you really like what we're doing, uh, check us out over on Facebook where we post every day.